In this video, I will be explaining a technique called circular polymerase extension cloning, otherwise known as CPEC. CPEC is a molecular subcloning technique. Subcloning is the process of creating recombinant DNA molecules by cutting and ligating desired pieces of DNA together in a vector. The components needed for subcloning include a vector, a circular piece of DNA containing an origin of replication, a selectable marker, and a multiple cloning site, and an insert, a piece of DNA containing the gene of interest which is typically ligated into the vector at the multiple cloning site. Combining the vector and the insert generates a recombinant plasmid, which is typically transformed into an organism for downstream applications. CPEC is a sequence-independent subcloning technique. It is a DNA polymerase-based extension of annealed DNA fragments to introduce an insert into a vector. Some key components of CPEC are the vector, the insert, and an adapter sequence. The adapter sequence is a short DNA sequence from the vector sequence which will be added to the insert. Before initiating the CPEC reaction, the double-stranded circular DNA vector must be linearized. This is achieved through restriction digest or PCR. Note again that the vector includes the adapter sequence. While already linearized, unlike the vector, the double-stranded DNA insert lacks the adapter sequence. This can be added via PCR. So the components required for CPEC are the linearized vector and insert with the adapter sequence and all the reagents necessary for a conventional PCR minus the primers. A high fidelity DNA polymerase lacking strand displacement activity should be used in the reaction to ensure optimal product formation. Although this setup resembles a standard PCR, CPEC is not a DNA amplification technique. As in a standard PCR, however, there are three steps, denaturation, annealing, and extension. During denaturation, the double-stranded vector and insert DNA are melted at a high temperature to produce single-stranded templates. In the annealing step, the purpose of the adapter sequence becomes clear. It provides a region of homology between the vector and the insert at which they can anneal to each other. As is illustrated here, it is possible to create multiple different recombinant plasmids in the same CPEC reaction by using varying DNA inserts. In the extension step, circular double-stranded recombinant plasmids are produced as follows. DNA polymerase binds to the three prime end of the insert strand. Using the vector strand as a template, DNA synthesis occurs in the five prime to three prime direction as the enzyme fills in the vector sequence on the insert strand. Once it reaches the end of the template, the polymerase dissociates, leaving a nick at the three prime end of the newly synthesized DNA strand. DNA polymerase then binds to the three prime end of the vector strand. Now the enzyme uses the insert strand as a template, synthesizing DNA in the five prime to three prime direction as it fills in the insert sequence on the vector strand. This once again generates a DNA strand with a nick at its three prime end and the polymerase dissociates. To recap, the product of CPEC is double-stranded recombinant DNA fragments containing the vector, insert, and adapter sequences. These products are circular, being held together by the complementarity of the overlapping region between the two NICs. The DNA can then be transformed into competent cells, and the NICs will be repaired in vivo by the action of intracellular ligases. Here are some of the advantages of CPEC over other subcloning techniques. CPEC uses a single enzyme and few cycles to save time and money. For a two-fragment cloning combination, as shown in this video, as few as one cycle will suffice to bring the reaction to completion. CPEC is not a DNA amplification technique like PCR, so multiple cycles are not required for the reaction. Less DNA template is required for CPEC compared to other subcloning methods. CPEC can be used to assemble multiple fragments into a single vector. Unlike the two-fragment cloning combination, however, up to 20 cycles may be needed to join multiple fragments together in a single vector. CPEC can be used to generate complex recombinant plasmid libraries, and CPEC has high cloning accuracy and efficiency. For more information on this topic, links to the references used to create this video are located in the description below.